This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. A body scanner and mail scanner are coming to the Grant County Jail to help alleviate a large epidemic of drugs being snuck into the facility. Four new red light cameras are being installed this week in Moses Lake, set to begin operation September 30th. Earlier this month, Wenatchee High School announced that its on-time graduation rate for the class of 2018 came in at 91.5 percent. When the Afraid of Tigers volleyball team hosted the Othello Huskies, it was an important game for both teams. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. A body scanner and mail scanner are coming to the Grant County Jail to help alleviate a large epidemic of drugs being snuck into the facility. Grant County Commissioners on Tuesday approved a budget extension request from the Sheriff's Office not to exceed $371,000 to purchase both scanners. Sheriff Tom Jones says the facility is experiencing a high volume of narcotics coming into the jail based on intelligence gathered from inmates and inmate phone calls. According to Jones, inmates are making requests for narcotics to be brought into the facility by friends who know they will be arrested for warrants or other offenses. Those people will hide the drugs rectally prior to getting arrested, knowing jail staff is limited to when and how they can search people being booked into jail. Jail staff has reported several overdoses this year in the jail, resulting in hospitalization. One overdose inmate was also found with more than an ounce of meth hidden rectally, and he had already smuggled and distributed a large amount of heroin and synthetic marijuana in the jail. With the body scanner, Sheriff Jones said the only way to introduce narcotics into the jail would be through the mail. Lieutenant Dan Durand visited the Yakima County Jail in August, where both a body scanner and mail scanner are used. Yakima County staff advised substantial quantities of mail containing concealed drugs were intercepted once the mail scanner was installed, and the incoming mail has decreased drastically since. Jones says he's hoping to have both scanners installed by the end of the year. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Change doesn't have to be complicated. With a low-profile microwave hood combination that's ready to install right out of the box. It fits in the same space as your under-cabinet hood, so you can get your microwave off the countertop and make space for the routines worth keeping. The low-profile microwave hood combination from the number one selling appliance brand in the USA. Whirlpool Appliances, now available at more furniture in Ephrata. Four new red light cameras are being installed this week in Moses Lake, set to begin operation September 30th. The red flex cameras are being placed facing north and south on North Stratford Road at the Winco Foods and Walmart intersection and north and south on South Pioneer Way at East Hill Avenue. The Moses Lake City Council approved the new cameras in January at the request of Police Chief Kevin Fuhrer, as both intersections have been problematic in recent years, with more than 30 collisions at each light in the past three years. Back in January, citing studies from traffic safety organizations, Fuhrer said the red light cameras have proven to reduce side impact and head-on collisions, although rear end wrecks can increase. The city will now have nine red flex cameras installed, costing about $540,000 annually, while expecting to bring in about $900,000 in revenue. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Your taste buds bored? Well then bring them to Jay's Teriyaki. Not only does Jay's have a variety of teriyaki dishes, they also offer mouth-watering salads and sides. Call Jay's 509-764-5155. Jay's Teriyaki, located at 123 East Broadway in Moses Lake. Because it's all in the sauce. Earlier this month, Wenatchee High School announced that its on-time graduation rate for the class of 2018 came in at 91.5% which marked a 5.8% increase over the year prior. The staff here in this building works extremely hard, and I would even argue the entire staff in this district, because when we talk about graduation rates, it's not just the culmination of this last four years. It really is the student's experience all the way through our education system. Data from the Washington State Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction indicates that this is the highest rate of graduation for Wenatchee High in the 17 years since statistical tracking of 12th grade completion rates began, and officials credit the milestone to many years' worth of work and careful planning. 
It's not a, hey, we're gonna change one thing and so that's gonna make this huge bump in graduation rates. It's over years, multiple years of time as to how are we doing some things different. One tweak that we made last year was we actually focused on ninth grade failure rates. So that was kind of our building wide focus and what was kind of an interesting um, side note to that was not only did our ninth grade failure rates drop drastically, but our entire building failure rates dropped drastically because of just the focus. We had a pretty narrow focus, but that narrow focus actually kind of expanded out into the work the entire building was doing. One implementation which school officials are attaching to the elevated graduation figures is the expansion of social services for students. Social services are a key component to students. We've recognized that students need supports not just academically here in the building, but there are a lot of hurdles that are occurring outside at the home, even in relationships they have inside the school itself, friends, family. And so giving them supports that they're feeling comfortable that they can use so that they can get past those hurdles to be more successful in the academic part of their schooling is key. In addition to the high school's benchmark numbers, graduation rates are also on the rise district-wide as well, up 7.6% over last year to a record 84.3% for 2018. Reporting for iFiber One News, I'm Chris Hansen. When the Afraid of Tigers volleyball team hosted the Othello Huskies, it was an important game for both teams. The Tigers and the Huskies both held a 4-2 overall record and both dropped their conference openers against top-tier opponents and were looking to get back on track. In the end, Afreda swept Othello in three sets. The Tigers came out on fire, catching the Huskies off guard and taking the first set by a dominant 25-7. The Huskies quickly bounced back and battled hard in the second set. The Huskies took an early lead, but Afreda quickly overtook them and led the majority of the second set finally taking it 25 to 20. The third set was fierce. Othello led for more than half of the set and the score was back and forth between the two teams before Freda launched ahead late to close out the set 25 to 20. After the game, Freda team captain Denali Sheneman talked about the team's mindset going into matches. We play as ones and this team like has to fight and like we don't give up no matter what. Like, always the mentality that we're going to be on top, we're going to be in control. Afreda's next match will be tomorrow when they travel to Grandview. Othello will also be on the road tomorrow night at SELA. I'm Adam Joukowsky for iFiber One Sports. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, visit us online at iFiberOne.com or check us out on Facebook.